Hello and <laughs> God damn it. welcome back to Dream Daddy Simulator. Onwards, we've decided to continue onwards with Craig. We're not going to waste our time with these jumps. Yeah, no. Yes, we're sure. But are we? Yes, we want River. I have commitment issues. If... <laughs> Just no commentary. <laughs> You're mean. <laughs> oh, the giggle. Okay, it took some time for your schedules to line up, but you were finally able to find a weekend where Craig and you could go camping. He always strays, so he strays. He strays. What is fucking wrong with you? Uh, I don't read out loud this often, okay? He always stays so busy with work and the kids, but it's good to know that you'll just be able to spend some time relaxing together in nature. He, I like camping, so this is the perfect dude for us. Since your first run, you've managed to go on regular runs with Craig. You mostly do them because it seems like the only time you get to hang out, but the added benefit is that you've seen a lot of improvement in your health. Which, you know, was countered by the whole cake. <laughs> and the ice That's cream fine. and the pizza. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. Uh, you were able to, shift, uh, to sift through the attic and find your old camping gear from college. Craig put you in charge of bringing the sleeping bags in the tent while he takes care of the food. So you double check to make sure everything is ready to go. Craig should be here any minute now. Amanda's going to be spending this weekend on a school trip to... Your nation's capital, she hasn't been away from home without you for longer than a day, so since she was 14. You hope she isn't feeling as nervous about it as you are. I sure. Man hey, Amanda Vanna. Amanda's in the middle of sitting on top of her luggage in order to get it to finally zip. Hey, Pops. Ready for your trip? Once I get this bad boy all zipped up, I'm good to go. How much did you pack? That seems like a lot for two days. Oh, it's all my camera equipment, lenses, tripod, flash, all that. Are you even going to have time to take pictures? Better question, do you think you should be squishing it like that? Yes. I'll find a way. I need to get some good shots for my series on National Monuments. Oh, what's the series about? It's one of those internet series where I reimagine Disney princesses as founding fathers. What? I'm kidding, nobody likes this. I'm taking portraits of my friends. Of which you no longer have. Yeah, that's my question. Oh, well, I'm going to be in the woods out there in nature. You know, roughing it. Just me and Mother Nature, the old Madre de Trees. <laughs> you going to be alright on your own? Mm-hmm. I don't have any signal out there. I won't be able to text or call you at all, so when Craig stabs me, I'm not going to be able to... Oh, jeez. Oh, it's alright. I'll be able to survive a couple days without constant updates on who just got voted off of International Haunted House Hunters. Well, I'll miss you. For the record, Bradley was pushed down a flight of ornate stairs by a ghost. They were really beautiful stairs. Amanda finishes zipping up the big suitcase and lugs it next to the door of her bedroom. She turns around and gives you a big hug. Relax, Dad Tron. I'm a big kid now. I can take care of myself. Besides, I gotta share a room with Monica Sanders and two mom chaperones. The most trouble I could possibly get into is falling asleep with a tub of ice cream on me. Oh, well, alright. Don't steal anything, okay? Since you asked nicely, fine. I promise. You step outside, hauling your bags behind you. Craig's already strapped some camping gear on top of your modest but stylish car. 
He notices you carrying your equipment and hurries over to take it from you. Aw, oh, that's cute. Hey, fuck you, I carry my own equipment. <laughs> Such a gentleman. Oh, Jesus, I almost fell over. Don't fall over. Just had a case of the vapors there. <laughs> oh, shoot, eggplants. Uh, never fear. These muscles were made for picking up heavy things and putting them in other places. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Speaking of having the vapors. <laughs> Remember, it's your weekend to relax. Take it easy. I mean, no baby, so. Oh shit. You didn't even notice. I didn't even notice, no. <sighs> That's the first thing I noticed. The baby's cute. I'm also walking around at the moment. So ah, you son of a gun. I guess we can't argue with that. Everything good with Amanda? Yeah, on our way to a school trip to Washington. What about your offspring? Already at Smashley's for the weekend. I'm ready to get my camp on. You love the I rest of he has an ex-wife. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that, too. For some reason, I keep thinking they're dead. Oh, no, ours is dead. <laughs> oh, right, right. Um, you load the rest of your stuff into Craig's car, and you get in. It amazingly looks just like your car. Because isn't that your kid? <laughs> oh, no. What's wrong? I think I left my juicer plugged in. We gotta go back. Worried that someone's gonna break into your house and cold press some carrots? Also, it's a different car because we're missing our hula girl. But we got the hula everything else. Yeah, it's fine. No, that's not our child! There's two. None of his kids look like that. Uh... They all have long black hair. Brown hair. No, it's just, I... Just try to relax, man. Let the juicer float away. Take all your worries and blend them into pulpy good vibes. Oh, jeez. Craig takes a deep breath. He doesn't say anything. Do hello. Uh-huh. Do we have anything to listen to? Uh, all I had at my place is a series of CDs that guide you through a thorough and intense calisthenics workout. So, do you want to listen to those? Uh, no. I I'm just kidding. <laughs> Craig hands you a thick case filled with CDs. Take your pick. You thumb through page after page of kids sing along CDs. Uh, yeah. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. That takes me back. Keep going. You get to the end of the case to find in the very last slot a blank CD with Craig's handwriting on it. Oh, he made you a mixtape? Oh, my God. DJ Keg Stands Mega Mix Volume 1. Question mark. Made it just for the trip. I think you'll like it. You pop the CD. I mean, in, in all fairness, I like to make CD stuff for trips. Well, so do I. I'm just saying, he made it just for you. It's special. It's special. You pop the CD into the car stereo, and it's like you're immediately transported to your old dorm room. Hit after hit plays, and soon enough, you're both happily scream-singing the lyrics to each song as you fly down the highway. Nah, uh, this song was Carl's favorite. Carl's the dog. <laughs> Carl, the third roommate. Got that dog home one night, I couldn't pry you two apart. So we spent an entire semester fabricating a story about our foreign exchange student roommate who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. And then we had a room inspection. That RA was so suspicious of us but could never prove anything. Carl was just under a blanket. 
Bust that pup's courage under fire. Man, we did some dumb things back in college. The hours fly by as you belt out tunes in whatever non-existent key your voices register in. Soon enough, you're surrounded by lush trees and spectacular vistas of everything amazing that nature has to offer. It feels good to be back out here. Real good. Hey, look, it's trees. Oh, there's, like, nature sounds. Isn't this the, isn't this yeah, the background this where Rob's woods. bench was? It's the woods in the park. <laughs> you park your car at the entrance to a familiar trail. Very familiar. And load up your gear on your backs. You're thankful that you've been working on your health over the past couple of weeks. Otherwise, you'd be dreading all the hiking that's about to happen. Craig looks intently at his phone. Everything all right? Yep. Just had to fire off one last work email. Oh yeah, uh, Craig, Craig pockets, shut up, Craig pockets the phone and you start off on the trail. It's relatively easy, but you know you would be, you would have been huffing and puffing at this point if it weren't for all the murder sprints. Good job. You look around you and take in the tall trees and animal chirps, animal, animal. why didn't they just say birds? Everything okay back there? Yeah, no, it's fine. There's no reception out here. Ah, uh, yeah, being out in the middle of nowhere will do that. You recognize the look of anxiety on Craig's face. But what if there's a problem? You've trained for this. Look, Craig, we all know that if you really wanted, you could flex your calf muscles... Fly out of here like a rocket ship all the way back to Maple Bay. You're gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine. This is our weekend. You're waking away. So cute. You. you keep marching down the trail, but it seems like Craig is still worried. After a bit, he stops in his tracks. Maybe we should go back. We could find another campground that gets good cell phone reception. Why didn't we just bring the kids camping? Because dad date, gosh. Never. Craig, seriously, what's wrong? I mean, I'm just really nervous. My dad instinct is kicking in, and my mind keeps conjuring up all sorts of worst-case scenarios. What if something happens to the girls? I don't have a signal. I would have no way of knowing. I tell you, that feeling never goes away, no matter how old your kids are. You just gotta remind yourself that they're in good hands. Craig doesn't say anything. I give him a re you give him a reassuring punch on the shoulder. I got this. Try to remember why we came out here. The plan was to get away from it all, just focus on ourselves for this little trip. No distractions, no cell phone service, just two dad relaxing out in the woods. No funny business. <laughs> Craig looks to you directly in the eyes. No distractions, no cell phone service, just two dads relaxing out in the woods. Gonna have some fun this weekend. Alright. You and Craig get back to March, and it's not too long of a hike before you get to the campsite, and you're both glad to see that you're the only people there. I can't believe you still have this tent. Found it in my attic, already checked it for holes. It's seen better days, sure, but I think we'll be able to survive. You dump the bag of fabric and pulls onto the ground. You unfold the tent in the desired spot. You hand Craig the, t the stakes. We still know how to do this, right? I never know how to do it. I do. Of course we do. You're going to have to teach me, because I actually never learned. It depends on the tent, actually. We do not! <laughs> Oh, that one's easy. After 20 minutes of struggling like people in a bad infomercial, <laughs> you somehow manage to build an upright structure that closely resembles what a tent would look like if you asked somebody to draw a picture of one with their eyes shut. <laughs> I wouldn't put this up against a storm, but I think we'll be able to survive for the night. 
You sat out at a couple of chairs and your cooking equipment, admiring your handiwork. Bro, look at us go. Look upon the kingdom we have built. Upon this rock we shall grill our meats and drink our brews. For we hold dominion over this land. Dude, it's funny how much like you he sounds. Verily, and uh, look at our camping <laughs> chairs. This is Zach, actually, now that I've thought about it. Uh, which, are, which we are going to sit on. <laughs> so what's next on the camp extravaganza docket? Well, now that we have shelter settled, I think it's time for us to do some exploring. There's a waterfall a little bit up the way that I'm sure we could hike to. Let's get hiking. You and Craig venture into the woods. You amble along, taking your time to chat and admire the wildlife. Not yet. Craig reaches out an arm and stops you. See? He thought that was weird. <laughs> Dude. Does that look like what Dude. I think it looks like? You look at where he's pointing. Oh my god, it does. Tree looks like a butt. <laughs> I can't get over how detailed it is. You examine the butt tree further. The contour is perfect. It even has back dimples. I thought we were going to have a great time camping, but this makes it even better. <laughs> Craig holds back a snicker. No, he doesn't. I aspired to have every hike be as good as this one. Your snicker now too. <laughs> Let us analyze this tree further. <laughs> you and Craig share a huge belly laugh at your awful jokes. Best thing about this is that there's no daughters here to tell us our jokes are bad. High five. You and Craig hit the trail again. It's been a long time since you've been out here, but everything seems more or less familiar. You point out old landmarks that you remember back from your college days. You think you're getting close now. Check it out. There's a clearing up ahead. As you get closer, you can hear water running. Sweet. Cresting over a hill, you and Craig are greeted by a wide clearing surrounded by trees. In front of you is a beautiful waterfall spilling into a large body of water that runs into a river. Mouse agape with the genuine beauty of the place, you go to investigate. The old waterfall. Hey. It's gorgeous. Nature is so rad. Oh my gosh. Peering further, we get an idea of how deep the pool is. Think we could jump off it like the old days? <laughs> so old dad is happy here on dry land. Looks like you could climb right up over here. Over th there. Didn't even bring swimming trunks. What are you talking about? Craig immediately begins taking his clothes off. Alright. <laughs> Look at Craig's butt. You can't help but sneak a peek. That. That. Is a good butt. Craig turns around suddenly. He catches you looking. I do a lot of glute workouts. <laughs> yeah, of course you like that. You immediately turn away blushing. You coming or what? Oh, uh, I don't know about this, dude. He's already making his way over to the waterfall by the time you finish your sentence. When he realizes you're not right behind him, he turns around and rolls his eyes. We lived together for years and I've seen your ass more times than I can count. It's no big deal. You got a chief. Let's put on a show. Who needs pants anyway? That's what I always yeah. say. <laughs> Society's oppressors! Oh gosh. Down with pants! Down with the system. That's the spirit. You take your shirt off and drop it in a pile with Craig's clothes. You put the rest of your clothes on the ground, feeling 
exposed. <laughs> you and Craig climb up to the top of the waterfall, making sure not to slip on any wet rocks. He reaches the peak before you do and offers you a hand getting up. Watch where you're grabbing. Yeah. At the top, you look over the cliff and into the tiny lake. It seems so much higher up from this perspective. Craig has always been a daredevil. He pulled some stunts in college that you're honestly still shocked he survived. You were always the one standing on the sidelines watching and hoping you wouldn't be bringing him home in a gurney. It's dangerous. It's screw dangerous. <laughs> Craig looks you in the eyes. Don't think, just jump. Craig cannonballs off of the waterfall and into the lake, creating a huge splash. You're worried for a moment before he finally resurfaces from under the water. Woohoo! <laughs> he treads water and looks up at you. You coming or what? Don't think, just jump. How are you supposed to just not think? I'm pretty sure that's not physically possible. Your toes grip the edge of the rock. The water looks so far away. Don't think, just... You run off the edge trying to do your best cannonball. Somewhere in the middle, it turns into a really graceful belly flop. You hit the water with a loud slap. You resurface to find Craig giggling. I rate that belly flop a solid 8 out of 10. Your form was lacking, but your heart was in the right place. You playfully splash water at Craig. <laughs> Are you sure about that? You splash him again. <laughs> You've given me no choice. Craig splashes you in the face with a huge wave of water. You've awakened the beast. He launches another wave of water at you. Don't you put me in a corner here. Don't put a wild animal in the corner. Hammer fist! With the force of thunder, you bring your fist down into the water, creating a tidal wave that drenches Craig. Good one. But I think you could do better. Or I can do better. Somebody can do better. Craig answers back with his own tidal wave. It's big enough to launch you back further. He's so strong. Craig, truce, please. Craig thinks about it. <laughs> yeah, sure. You shake hands. shake hands. There is peace. There is peace. Man, that jump was such an adrenaline rush. Not so scary now, huh? I'll race to the top. You run all the way up the slick rocks and cannonball off of the waterfall again. What a rush. Good form on that one. Wanna go again? You know it. One more time. With the same energy you had in your youth, you climb back up to the top of the waterfall. You're brave enough to try a flip, which your sure looks incredibly graceful as you belly flop into the water. <laughs> Phew, man, this is fun. Got one more in you? I live for danger. It takes you a little more time, but you get to the waterfall and both do your best running jumps into the water below. Alright, I think that's my limit. We should get going back before it gets too dark. You're right. We should probably head back. You go to put your clothes on and notice they're soaking wet. Maybe a splash fight wasn't the best idea. That's ah, okay, we'll get a fire going on in no time. We can dry off and get some dinner going. And your underpants. <laughs> Sopping wet, you hike back to the camp and unpack everything you need for dinner. Craig pulls out a couple of steaks and some chopped potatoes and tinfoil. You ready for a feast? Hey man, take a seat. Craig Train's pulling into the relaxation station. I'm your conductor. Let me cook for you. Oh shoot. Absolutely not. Cooking is the thing that relaxed me the most. I'll take it from here. Sorry, take a sip. 
Craig cooks now? You remember how his entire sophomore year diet consisted of microwavable mac and cheese, but not microwaved and have trouble... What? It consisted of conceiv- of microwavable mac and cheese, just not microwaved. And you have trouble believing the thing he just said. But that's so weird. If you don't microwave, then it's just dry noodles. Yeah. And powdery cheese. Cheese powder, yeah. yeah that's so gross. At least let me start the fire. Sure, let me just grab my matches. Craig reaches into his backpack. He rummages around in his bag, pulling things out and checking every pocket. Uh Uh-oh. I know I packed it. Craig checks another bag and still can't find it. Your stomach grumbles and now you're more actually acutely aware of how cold and wet you are. You really need to get a fire started. Okay, well, it's not the end of the world. Gosh, I'm so stupid. I could have sworn I packed it. I'm sorry, dude. Yeah, don't be. We can figure this out. Is there a fire with smart guys? I mean, how hard could it be? Watch plenty of survival programs on TV. If a naked reality TV star can do it, so can we. It's a wood. You just to the trees around you. There's no shortage of that. And some tinder. We can make that work. Then I think some ancient aliens are then supposed to come by, give us advanced technology. Or renovate our house. Depends on the show. <laughs> you and Craig gather a variety of wood, bark, and moss until you have all of the materials that could conceptually make a passable looking campfire. Just add fire, right? That's the fun part. The sun is just now setting and a cool breeze rustles the leaves of the trees around you. You have to work quick. I've done this in the past and I know I can figure it out. Just give me a second. Any way I can help? Give me some moral support. Lift my spirits and we'll make this fire happen. I never knew a better Craig. All my days, I can confidently say I've never known a Craig to be a better friend, father, or a fire maker. That seemed to work. <laughs> uh uh-uh. Actually, now I think about it, I knew a guy named Craig in high school and ended up getting a job as a professional pyrotechnics operator. I suppose he must have been pretty good at starting fire, but I bet you're even better than that guy. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> How could you? Fail, that one failed a little bit. <laughs> Backfired. Eventually, Craig is miraculously able to get something going. He blows on the embers and gently places the glowing moss into the base of the pit. Soon enough, you have a nice little fire going. Boosh. Way to go, man. We're regular old outdoorsy fellows. Hooray for not dying. You take a seat in one of the lawn chairs Craig brought and cozy up to the fire, warming up your hands. Mm -hmm. Relax, man. Take it easy. Let me handle the dinner. You watch as Craig stokes the fire and sets up a makeshift grill for the steaks. After all that hiking and swimming and fire starting, you're able to relax a bit. With the sound of crickets and the scent of steak filling the air, you actually feel pretty calm. Craig expertly sears two steaks in a pan he's been heating up on the fire, cracking thyme and crushed ginger over it while basting them both in butter. Wow, you didn't know he was actually good at cooking. The fanciest you ever saw him get in college was when he started sprinkling the seasoning packet onto the dry ramen and eating it straight up. What is with this dude in dry noodles? Nasty. When did this happen? You used to eat cereal every morning with beer instead of milk. I can see that. I grew up, I guess. I think these are just about ready. Hey, fair play. You can't have three kids if you're going to be eating dry macaroni. <laughs> yeah, no. Craig puts the steak onto a paper plate and sets them aside. You start to reach for one, but Craig smacks your hand away. Mm. Dude, let them rest. It'll be more flavorful that way. You patiently return to your seat, eyeing the steaks longingly from a distance. They smell incredible. Craig prepares a side salad for you in the meantime, sprinkling feta cheese onto freshly chopped greens. 
He plates it next to a generously generous pile of roasted potatoes covered in olive oil and rosemary. This sounds like Italian food we serve at work. <laughs> mm-hmm. Once it's all ready, you sit down by the fire and dig in. This does not sound like any meal I've ever had while camping. <laughs> yeah, no. The potatoes, like steak and potatoes, yeah, but it's like usually chopped ground beef. Like, Everything's... Oh, that's you. I don't know why I tried to read. tastes okay. Stop. Just take my lines. I'm in heaven. That's what I like to hear. Oh, shoot. Things you don't want to hear from dudes in underpants. <laughs> Things I want to hear from dudes in underpants right now. I want these two guys get to work. Oh, shoot. Read your line. Remember how... I'm fucking reading it. Remember how for an entire semester we would eat burritos for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? It's so hard to not go back to that. You now, man. You have kids, great job. Now you cook like a vengeful wizard whose arch nemesis is microwavable food. I'm really impressed with how you've how much you've gotten your life together. Craig laughs, but there's no humor in it. I'm glad you think that. You glance at Craig while he picks at his salad. He really grew out of his baby face, but there's something about his expression that makes him seem so much older than he is. A sense of maturity he didn't have in college. He looks exhausted. You okay? Hi. Yeah. Come on, dude. I've known you for long enough to see when you're down. I'm tired, bro. I think being out here is making me realize just how drained I feel. You work really hard, Craig. It can't be easy. I have to, for my girls. I volunteer at their school. I cook healthy meals for them. I do everything I can. T I can. I do everything I can to make sure they're safe and happy. And when they're with their mom, I'm always working overtime so I can support them. Then you work out a lot, so you can crush anyone who stands in their way. That, and I don't want to fall into my old habits. I need to set a good example for my girls. Everything I do is for them, and I wouldn't have it any other way. But it seems like it's bleeding you dry. If that's what it takes to raise them, well, then it's worth it. Craig, buddy. I know where you're coming from here, but you gotta take care of yourself, too. I do, though. I eat right and exercise and... That's not what I mean. You're too little butter and too much toast, you know? Nice. <laughs> what? You know? <laughs> no, apparently Spreading not. yourself too thin. Listen. Listen. <laughs> Life needs balance. It's great that you care this much about your kids, but... You can't neglect your own needs because you're too busy taking care of everyone else's. You matter too. It's just, I know I can provide for my family. And if I take a step back and look at everything objectively, I know I'm doing right by them. But I can't explain it, man. There's always that voice in the back of my head telling me that I need to do more. It's That's like Satan. A, what? Satan? <laughs> Shut up. It's like, it's never enough for me. Every time I try to relax, that voice keeps telling me I don't deserve it. To be honest, I even feel guilty about being out here. Craig, you're trying your best, and you're doing an amazing job. That's a fact. But even if you weren't, you would still deserve happiness. I don't know. Do I, though? Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah, bro! <laughs> yeah. Ownage. You look at Craig and think about what a good friend and even better father he is. He's compassionate, hardworking, he's relentlessly positive. He encourages everyone to be the best version of themselves. He makes you want to be a better person. If you could only see yourself the way I see you. Aww. Naked and <laughs> sitting in a chair. Shoot. Craig beams. He gets up and walks over to his supplies. Come on. I brought dessert. Ah, uh, yeah. Are you gonna use the torch, the campfire, to torch the tops of some crème brûlée? <laughs> what? I know little or nothing about cooking. <laughs> Craig pulls out marshmallows. 
you know nothing about camping either. <laughs> no, you really don't. <laughs> well, you still know how to make s'mores, right? I think the more important question is, do you know how to make s'mores? As I recall, you used to be com- you used to just completely blacken the marshmallows. I know people stood to that on purpose. S'mores are something I've only ever been able to do. It's the only part of camping I know how to do. Awesome. Oh, I stand by that. It's charred on the outside, but the gooey center is preserved. Brutish. True that. Craig throws a marshmallow at you, and you catch it in your mouth. Pro move. You used to be able to do that at a great distance against a wind disadvantage. Give me a week of practice. I'll be competitive again. (laughs) You and Craig sit in the warm glow of the campfire, watching embers float up towards the sky. Excuse me. Stars are so much brighter out here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I miss this scene. Me too. You stay here until it gets late, half remembering stories from college. You watch as the fire dies and eventually clamber into the tent. You crawl into the tent and unfurl your sleeping bag oh shoot wait where's the other sleeping Craig, bag let me cuddle you <laughs> for warmth <laughs> you look around for a second oh oh no I must have left it at home oh yeah totally not on purpose it's all yours dude I'm sorry I'll just curl up over here at the corner. <laughs> no way here Craig unzips the sleeping bag and spreads it out so there's enough room for both of you to lay on top of it. Night, bro. Good night, bro. You roll over and you face away from each other. Without a blanket, it's really cold. You shiver and without realizing it, you find yourself nestling closer to Craig. You're sure he won't mind. He turns over and you can feel his breath on your neck. It's hard to focus on anything else. Ever told you a story of when Zack threw me into an air conditioning unit? No, but I would like to know how that's, like, applicable. I rolled over in my sleep. We were doing a trip to, uh, uh, it was either Washington or Pennsylvania. And he was on the bed talking to the two other roommates we had. I had fallen asleep. I guess I rolled over and my arm went around his waist and so he picked me up, threw me against the wall. I bounced off the wall into the air conditioning unit against the bed and then onto the floor. Oh, shoot. And walked with a limp for the rest of the trip. So don't do that. <laughs> Zachary is not a cuddler now. The anti-cuddler. Oh, Jesus, no. <laughs> you turn over trying to get more comfortable. You open your eyes to find Craig's face only a few inches from yours. For once, he looks at peace. His eyes flutter open. His his hand finds a place on your waist. You're not sure who leans in first, but suddenly you're kissing. I can't read this anymore. (laughs) You got this. You look at each other again, your heart racing. Craig. Oh, God. I got straw. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it is. I got strong feelings for you, bro. Feelings I can't deny anymore. Bro. bro. Me too. I need them to stop saying bro while they're doing it. <laughs> That's what makes it funny. You run your hands through his hair, then down to his chest. Craig brings you closer, wrapping his arms around you. You feel so secure. You know, talking about old times is fun, but I like making new memories with you. You smile, tracing the lines of his hips with your finger. You kiss again. You're not worried about you getting cold, <laughs> too cold tonight. <laughs> no, but, um, I would say not. <laughs> Day complete. I mean, you scored, so that should be S. S. Yeah, suck it. Boom, baby. Perfect score. We rock. 
kickstand champion is complete. So, I guess this is it for this episode. Uh, yes. I'm just waiting for the loading screen to stop. It's still loading for me, too. There we go. We're home! Yeah. Yeah, we are. Alright. We will possibly see the ending of this game next time. Hopefully. See you guys then. Peace.